Hello, I'm Alexandra, and today you are watching the second ever episode of the Women's Speed Chess Championship Highlights! If you're not as excited as I am, then I really don't know why you're watching chess on YouTube. We are going to be looking at highlights from the last matchup between Grandmaster Alexandra Kostinyuk, the former Women's World Champion. If you don't know that, then I suggest you brush up on your chess trivia. And International Master Anna Zatonsky, who was a four times US Woman Champion. Ultimately, Alexandra did really well in the match and won by 20 to eight, but my three favorite moments from that match are something we can all learn from, so let's, let's get started. In our first game, we have Alexandra as white and Anna as black. At first glance, the game seems relatively balanced. It came out of a Petrov, hence the open E file. White is slightly better because of having more space in the center and also having a slightly better light squared bishop than black does in this position. That being said, it's not obvious how white would continue the attack here. Well, I guess it was obvious to Alexandra because after a5 she continued with queen d4, centralizing her queen, putting pressure on the knight. I'm going to draw an arrow even though you guys are smart and you already saw it. Arrow. There we go. As well as putting pressure on the g7 square. Anna continued with rook takes c1, rook takes c1, and then she moved her knight away from the threat with knight g6. How would you continue this attack? I'll tell you how Alexandra continued the attack. Knight h5, amazing move, threatening queen takes g7 check. After knight de5 protected it by blocking, Alexandra came up with a very creative maneuver. Knight takes e5, d takes e5, and the beautiful rook takes e5. That would seem a little bit risky to some because you're giving a rook up for a minor piece and a pawn, so you're technically down one point. But had Anna continued by taking on e5, queen takes e5 would have continued to put pressure on the king side, queen f8 would have defended the pawn on g7, queen f5 threatening mate on h7, g6, Looks like it might be a pin. It's attacking the queen and the knight at the same time. But Alexandra has knight f6 check. King h8 and queen h3 putting more pressure on h7 yet again. Yes, black can continue to try to defend this position. But the point is that Alexandra has more than enough compensation for the technical material imbalance. Instead of taking the rook, Anna continued with c5 thinking that she was putting pressure on the queen and maybe trying to force it away from the attack. However, Alexandra almost immediately played rook e8, checking the king, also attacking the queen, as well as threatening checkmate on g7, and Anna resigned right away. During the video, Alexandra took a sip of, I think, the coffee she was drinking, smiled at the camera, and moved on to the next game, like we will right now. Here we have another game with Alexandra as white and Anna as black. I picked this game because I thought it was a really nice way to finish off this scary attack. Anna had just played knight g7 with the idea of putting more pressure on the f5 square. Unfortunately, f5 was still possible. A very nice move played by Alexandra. The idea behind this was that if black had continued with bishop takes f5, the natural looking move, Alexandra could have continued with bishop takes f5, knight takes f5, only to be met by yet another sacrifice, rook takes f5, g takes f5, queen takes f5, threatening queen g5, followed by knight f7, and there's no way to stop this checkmate without getting in very serious material debt. Instead, after f5, Anna continued with knight fh5. I'm guessing the idea behind this was to look towards the g3 square in case Alexandra kept her pawn on f5. She would have been able to win it back if she had brought in another defender. Alexandra, seeing this, took immediately on g6. h takes g6. Knight takes f7, a free pawn here. Queen d7. Knight e5. Queen e6. And... Here she took with the bishop on g6 to bring another piece into the attack. 
Anna continued with knight f6, trying to block the very dangerous looking f file, only to be met by queen f7, which is technically a family pin because it is threatening the king, the queen, and the rook here. Anna resigned. It was a very hard attack to stop. And what I think we can learn from this is even in a position like this, where it seems like black may be doing a really good job defending because all of the minor pieces are near the king or pointing towards the king side at least, as white here, you can continue, you can consider sacrificing material to get such a nice attack. I hope you enjoy this game. Let's move on to the last one. In this last game, we once again have Alexandra's white and Anna's black. Don't worry, the match was actually even. They had a similar amount of whites and blacks. This just happened to be the order of really nice games that I found. In this position, Anna actually seems like she's up material because she has a pawn up. Unfortunately, her king is in a really unsafe position on f7. And what Alexandra had to figure out here was how to continue the attack. She wants to get her queen in if possible, but there's no obvious way because the knight is guarding the square on c4, which is why Alexander continued with bishop takes e5, a tactic called eliminating the defender. Bishop takes e5, queen c4 check, and there's no good moves here for black. I'll let you guys try to think about it as well. Um, if the king moves to f8 or to g7, then the knight is forking the king and the queen on e6. If the king moves away to somewhere that doesn't fork the queen and the king, such as e8, which happened in the actual game, then you have queen g8, king d7, queen e6, attacking the king and the bishop. No way to save that minor piece. I thought this was really nicely played. I hope to see you guys again next week. If you enjoy this, subscribe to the chess.com channel. Give this video a link. Not a link. Give it a like. If you want to link it to your friends too, then I'll be double appreciative. And I will see you guys again tomorrow to cover the next Women's Speed Chess Championship match.